Welcome to Bronson's new lab testing facility. I am so excited to be here with you and show you around just a bit and share with you the fun, cool spaces, the lean spaces, the design elements that are going to make this a great lab for years to come. And here's where our story begins. It's through these doors that our couriers are transporting patients' lives, patient specimens across the healthcare system and bring them, bringing them to our new lab for testing. The great thing about this space is they are uh, protected from the elements and yet can come on in, uh, drop their specimens off, pick up whatever else they need in terms of supplies to deliver to our customers and clients and offices and return to the road with efficiency. Now we're in our accession area where those specimens come through the, with the couriers and we pick them up and we bring them here and we start the processing, uh, receiving them into the computer systems. Parts of the design here was to keep a very wide open sight line so that we can see who needs help, where the work is. The other feature includes we're very flexible, very modular. This is one of our new automated pre-processing lines. Uh, where we take those specimens that are coming in from outpatients and or our ER and inpatient stations and loading them on the line. This line then spins those specimens down, eloquats to the multiple instruments throughout the lab, brings every efficiency in a high volume lab that helps us preserve on manual labor and take advantage of today's technology, uh, which we're so excited to be able to do. The lab profession is one of shortage in terms of trained medical technologists. So an added feature of these robotic lines is it not only pre-processes the specimen, but it delivers it to the instrument for the test and where it needs to be tested. Again, giving us maximizing our efficiency and our lean capacity for high throughput and timely delivery of specimens and results. What many don't know about Bronson Lab is we have a rich, fun history of oftentimes being an early adopter, not necessarily the first adopter, but an early adopter. And with this laboratory, we have opportunity to do that once again with our urinalysis technology. Uh, we are one of the first few in the country to acquire this technology. The chemistry portion is on these two instruments, and then the microscopic analysis occurs on these instruments. What it brings is uh, digital technology to us as opposed to the manual pieces of, of the human eye interpreting it and again gives us that added advantage of timely delivery of results that makes the big difference in terms of patient care and maximizing uh, their experience and the investment of dollars and time in beds that have lots of patients that need those beds. So we get to get them in and, and out and, and healthy again. A key component then of this space to give us that flexibility and opportunity is it's entirely modular. You don't know what size those instruments will be as technology changes. They can be large, they can be a smaller footprint. We're able to pull these uh, tables out, the different countertops, and be able to move them in and we're plumbed and ready to go to work uh, with everything. In terms of design elements, we purposefully uh, placed our supervisor offices on the exterior outer uh, boundaries of the testing lab. What's so great about this concept is it puts the uh, supervisor, those uh, questions that need to be asked and answered, right with staff and puts us in sight line and conversation and engagement right away with each other. Inventory management is no small task, particularly when your test menu is anywhere from, who knows, 200 to 600 tests that you're performing on those automated lines that we've seen out there. And this gives us great efficiency, first in, first out, the right expiration dates, uh, the ability to walk up and see if something is uh, getting low in supply and make sure we have timely delivery of ordering and management of our PARs. What you have is the exterior refrigerator where staff can reach in for their uh, reagents and then the interior refrigerator space where we are stocking and placing the most recent delivered to the back of the line. In uh, traditional refrigerators, you're doing that shuffling over and over again. 
the efficiencies and the lean nature of this design is just fantastic. This is our blood bank or our blood transfusion services. Bronson is a level one trauma hospital, so much of the work or where a lot of the uh, high energy, fast paced excitement can occur is in the massive transfusions that we respond in terms of those traumas coming into our ER. So what you're seeing here is where all those patients' lives will be stored in our refrigerator bank. Another change in laboratory medicine is there are many more add-on tests or reflex tests rather than uh, what they used to call the shotgun approach and you'd order every different test trying to determine or assess or sort out Sherlock what's going on with that patient. Now we can again maximize the right test at the right time and one result will then clinically inform the next result so now we're coming back into these refrigerators getting that patient life out of their bed and putting them back through for more tests for that actionable intelligence that our clinicians can then treat the patient to their best. Where our chemistry department has been automated and on robotic lines for several years now, microbiology has been a much more hands-on human experience until recently. And again, that technology is catching up and changing so rapidly. So here's another really great piece of equipment that will do many of the pre-analytics and do it much safer. Bronson has many, many, many surgeries going on every day. And those patients and their tissues arrive at this station where we process those tissues into small cuts so that we can get down to their cellular structure. And it's that cellular structure on the slide that our pathologists are taking to the microscope and determining if our patients are um, cancer, uh, hyperplasia, uh, good news, bad news, and again, informing uh, their care. It's a fun story, pathology, histology, where that specimen that came down from surgery is ultimately makes its way to this station and is been embedded into paraffin such that we can then mount it to this very fine cutting blade and create thin slices uh, of the cellular structure and place it on the slide. And then we can take that slide into the staining that I referenced earlier to determine uh, what tumor it is, if there's a tumor there, and or what treatment we might be able to provide. Like the pathology suite, we also have a cytopathology suite for our cytotechs, where the work has, is focused and they're in front of a, a microscope and examining slides all day. Unlike histology, which is looking at tissues and prepping them for to be placed on a slide, cytopathology is taking body fluids and prepping those cellular structures onto a slide. And then it's our cytotechs that are uh, interpreting those various uh, slides and the elements and providing preliminary reports, if not finalized, then if it needs additional consult by our pathologists. This is our conference room. We have a lot of training events, a lot of webinars, many meetings with vendors, uh, to the latest and greatest changes going on in our industry and those changes are happening every day. We're excited about the most up-to-date audio-visual equipment in this room and we'll be taking advantage of it probably even more now that uh, COVID has changed our experience together in terms of distant uh, meetings as opposed to in a room together directly physically with one another. Our great education space. As a laboratory, we host at least six interns a year for our clinical laboratory medicine program. Uh, laboratorians are in short supply and we're happy to do that learning. Our educators provide a great learning experience for these folks, as do our staff in bench side-by-side -side training. And as well as our own staff need lots of ongoing education to maintain our annual competency and compliance requirements as dictated by our accreditation organization. And then one more small kitchenette space on our second floor for the staff that work on this floor, as well as it's right outside our conference room. And here's our pathology suites. This was an area we again very intentionally designed. 
Our pathologists are doing clinical care interpretations of patients' uh, biopsy slides, and we intentionally made this a quiet space where they can do nothing but focus on their work. This is our medical director's office. It's got great space to meet one-on-one -on -one with uh, staff and discuss consult work. We have a really great feature of high load desks such that they are spending a lot of time with uh, the microscope and sometimes that can be difficult to do in a sitting position all day so they have the flexibility and modularity to raise and lower the desk in terms of standing at that scope and continue their work. This is what they call our lift or really an elevator and it's an elevator for the patient's slides. Our staff are preparing the tissues and applying them to the slides on the first floor and doing that analytic testing and then uh, sending them up to our pathology suite for the pathologists to do their scope work. Suites host 12 pathologists and this is just one office of those 12. Similar in design, great windows, and again you see the high-low with the, it elevated in this position. And this is where our point of care coordinators reside. We support many physician practices offices across the system as consults and adding new practices every day. So these guys are fielding lots of calls, questions, and a huge compliance piece with this again in terms of meeting our accreditations and ensuring the safety and quality of our patients both in the testing we're doing in offices and then the testing we're doing in this beautiful new lab. One of our goals in designing the facility was to get cool spaces for our staff. And I would like to think that we have hit a home run with this one in terms of the feedback that we're getting from the staff that have already had opportunity to see it. It, it creates an engaging space. We can sit around the table with each other and chat. We've got lots of refrigerator space for lunches. That was always a little bit in short supply in our previous place. Uh, it, a lot of fun happening in this place and we're glad that we uh, have it available for staff. And here's our locker room space. Again, another really uh, step up in terms of what we have available to us. Unisex in, in design in terms of maximizing the space where before we didn't always have a locker for every individual. And uh, now we've got nice, efficient uh, openings and movement and people have benches to sit down, space underneath for wet boots so those don't have to go in the lockers. Uh, it, it again has hit on every design element that we set out to achieve. And look here, we're in our bathrooms we are up to code. We have the touchless faucets, the touchless dryers, and our most safe self against our friend COVID. Again, we maximized our opportunity here to provide break space for our staff. Uh, high ceilings, bright open windows, the patio, in fact, outside for those nicer days is just a real bonus for us. Another place that we're so excited to provide our staff and for each other, uh, the quality of life room for those moments when uh, we need a mother's lounge, uh, you have maybe that headache that just needs a moment in the darkness and quiet to get away, uh, time for mindful thinking and reflection so that you re-energize to go back out to the high paces at the bench. Uh, we're just really, again, happy to provide this opportunity for us to be our most well self. And thank you so much for joining us on this tour. I'd be remiss if I didn't say thank you to so many people that made this happen. Uh, and it would be hard to call everyone out, but it's been those designers, those facility folks, those workers, uh, throughout the COVID crisis pandemic and our own staff. This whole lab started at the very beginning with our staff in classrooms and walking through and laying out designs and critiquing and trying to make it its most efficient design elements in terms of flexibility, modularity, and we couldn't have done it without them or anyone else that's been so integral. Uh, a person can't thank everybody enough. Uh, we are so excited and we appreciate it so much.